from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome inside the VM Village at VMworld 2018 where we have a nice big set, double set of theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman, joined with my co-host John Troyer and uh, wait, Case Townsend. Yeah, that, I, I, I don't know. Did you mess up the intro? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, luckily, you know, what the great thing about VMworld is it's got a great community. Remember a couple years ago, I had a couple of my staff that weren't going to be here and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do we do? So I reached out to community members. John Troyer, Keith Townsend, I said, hey guys, how'd you like to do some CUBE stuff? Keith did a whole bunch of CUBE with us for a couple of years and uh, something happened, uh, you decided to go and take a real job? You know what, evidently, you can't live off borrowed time for too long. It catches up with you. But VMware, obviously, world-class organization. I've been on the other side, interview folks on here. So, you know, I, I've gotten a good window into the org over the past couple of years, thanks to theCUBE. Yeah, well, Keith, look, first of all, thank you for all the time you did. And we, we call you the uh, once in future guest host of theCUBE. So, <laughs> we have not seen the end of Keith Townsend, the CTO advisor. Um, and you're now a solutions architect, though, at VMware. Um, if people want, you know, go read Keith's blog. Um, great resource to the community as to look at the jobs. You know, Keith didn't apply to VMware once or twice. It was uh, one of those you keep trying and eventually you know, you found a pretty sweet job. So yep. uh, maybe, you know, give us a little insight as to, you know, what brought you, what excited you to come, you know, join VMware. You've known, you know, the community, been a V expert, you know, been a watcher and a partner and, you know, a customer of VMware. Uh, what's it like being inside, uh, you know, wearing that logo? So I, I've said on the cube a, a couple of times, VMware moves at the speed of the CIO. You can take that one of two different ways. You can say, you know, VMware is a really slow organization, or they go right where the CIO needs to go, needs them to go. The thing that intrigued me about VMware all the time is that no company is better positioned to walk through digital transformation than VMware, as seen by the announcements this morning. VMware is struggling through, we're struggling through to find our way through what it is that the right combination of partnerships, technologies, people, process, to help companies transition to this new digital age, and that is an exciting thing to be a part of. Yeah, it's it definitely interesting times. Uh, I'm sure there's a number of companies that would say, um, hi, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, <laughs> you know, exactly. and, and the like, that uh, we think we're pretty well positioned to lead companies to where you need to go, but Definitely interesting stuff in the keynote. Uh, you know, the maturation of cloud and networking. You know, put, put, put your CTO advisor hat on there. How they doing? Yeah, this is where I got, you know, I, I tweeted it out earlier that, man, I got to be careful because some of the stuff that I want to tweet, I'm like, oh, you know what, I can't say that as a VMware employee, but I can not say uh, definitely. I was surprised at the RDS uh, announcement and the people love the, X, the VMware ESXi on ARM, two amazing announcements, but what really excited me was the RDS announcement. You know, on the Cube, I've pushed Chris Wolf, I've pushed uh, Lee Caswell, all of these GMs, these BU GMs, about when is the innovation going to come out of VMware again? You know, let's not just get uh, V1 updates, why should somebody upgrade from vSphere 5.5 to 6.7? Give us a compelling reason. And I think this morning we heard some really compelling stuff, like RDS on uh, vSphere is, I, I can't overstate how disruptive of an innovation that is. That, that could be really interesting. I liked what you said in the beginning about the digital transformation. I think we also heard this morning uh, the word digital foundation a lot, right? Which is, again, trying to, my, one of my goals here for the show, the, uh, Stu and Keith, is to kind of pin down what does VMware do? Like, what does it do? And, and it's not quite fair because it's quite a wide portfolio, but it seems to me, uh, Keith, that like it feels kind of like the early days when I was there of uh, you had to, uh, you had to be, a, you, had to, you had to work with a whole set of OEMs and the hypervisor, and the same, 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 some of the same things are happening you know, with a whole bunch of clouds. Uh, and and uh, working, working as a neutral Switzerland or partners with all, all of them. So, but, but I was actually wanted to pivot a little bit over to, uh, 
you as a communicator and as a member of the community, you were a customer, you worked for a large pharmaceutical company and you know, ran a lot of billion dollars worth of stuff. You chose to become a communicator and an explainer and to be part of the, of the learning process and buying process as an independent. Now back on the vendor side, is there anything in that journey you've learned about 2018 and how people learn and how IT people like figure this stuff. How do I even know where to go or what to buy or even what to consider? Like, is there any insights into that? So, John, that's a really great question. I was I went on a run this morning, the VFit run. We do it every year at VMworld, and I was with uh, VMUG CEO uh, Brad Thompson, and we were, we were we actually talked about this. You know, vSphere admins want, you know, just all the vSphere content that they can consume. In reality, they need to transition from just being focused on vSphere, 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 and vSAN and NSX to this broader picture. Pat on stage this morning talked through PKS, which is Kubernetes. He talked uh, a little bit of serverless. I mean, from a CEO of a software company, that was a lot to consume just on the stage this morning. So you can kind of be a deer in the head, like and think, what am I, what should I focus on? And I think the thing to focus on, uh, one, of our, one of my peers gave a talk, or two of my peers, uh, uh, Craig Fletcher, who bought me into VMware, and uh, Joseph Griffith gave a talk today on culture. And this is about culture, the culture to learn and grow. You don't necessarily have to learn a specific technology, but you should most definitely have the attitude that if the CXO comes to me and asks me about X business process, I need to know a high level answer to that and how do I get there? Simple, simple steps is learn your business processes. I'll, I'll throw just one out there, order to cash. Every organization has some process from when they either request money, they place an order, and how they eventually get paid. If you learn that process, the technology bits, I think, fall in place. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I, I've talked to you know, some of the users here, and they were a little bit overwhelmed this morning. Um, I don't think there's anybody at this show that if you, you know, put them in front of the CEO of their company and said, okay, tell me everything VMware's doing. <laughs> nobody can explain that. Nobody inside VMware, nobody out. There's too much. Um, part of the answer uh, you know, I, I get all the time is, well, how do I keep up? It's like, look, you're not going to keep up on everything. Yeah. You need to have, like, I think the role that you're in now, Keith, is part of helping customers understand what are the things they need to understand, what are the steps they can be taking, and the areas that they need to learn, and things that they can lean on you and your partners to get there. Is, is that a fair statement? Yeah, you know, I, I did a, uh, a podcast with Brian Gracely, maybe about a year, year and a half ago, and we talked about this very topic. At the highest level, you just need, from a CIO perspective, CIO, CTO, and if you don't have a CTO, that's probably step one. But from a CIO perspective, you need someone who can just think about big picture, how the moving parts work, and then you need people who can go deep in different uh, areas. I talked to uh, financial services uh, senior VP, and he was talking through uh, how he needed today a pivotal guy. But tomorrow, that pivotal guy would not need to be a pivotal guy, but a Kubernetes guy specifically and then how that guy would morph into something else. So he's structuring his organization so that he can, you know, hey, today this, this, this guy or gal knows this technology stack, but more important, they know systems and they can adjust and learn the technology that they need to learn to be effective. Because even as an analyst, I, at the, near the end of the CTO advisor as a full-time opportunity, I thought about focusing all on VMware because the company is that big now. You know, Pat on stage said that one of the things that they learned from AWS is how to add features every quarter. Can you, Stu, can, if, you told, if I told you five years ago that VMware would add a feature every quarter, like that just the culture just isn't there until, until now. Right. Yeah, so, you know, Keith, that, that's a really interesting point. That pace of change because you know, most people, when you talk about like vSphere upgrades, it was like, oh wow, it's like it came out every year, year and a half or so like that, that but too fast. I'm usually a couple of generations right. behind. Every quarter, there's no way I'm going to do that. 
we still have a little bit of an impedance mismatch. When I go use the cloud, some of the base things happen under uh, underline, but there's other things I still need to choose or there's automation that will help me. How do we help you know, CIOs, IT businesses to get to this more fluid, dynamic, upgradable environment uh, compared to the, oh wait, I need to consciously think about you know, when do I upgrade, when do I move, how do I make those changes? So we have to get out of this mindset that IT is in this constant ops mode. Whether it's you know, vSphere and the announcements that were made today or any other platform, we add no value by engineering upgrades, like putting time into uh, designing and testing the upgrade from vSphere 6.7 to vSphere 6.7 update one, really doesn't add value at the end of the day. VMware made critical announcements about uh, the path to having VMware manage that, you know, VMware Cloud on AWS is a great example, but the technologies are out there where we're no longer uh, consuming uh, our OS's, you know, there's plenty of Linux distributions, there's Windows uh, uh, 10, it'll be the last version of Windows desktop ever, and we'll get those updates directly from Microsoft. So we need to get out of the mindset that we add value as executives to managing upgrades and move our organizations where we're consuming these things as the black boxes they should be. All right, so Keith, last question. What surprised you so much so far inside of VMware? You know what, uh, honest, I'm going to give an honest, raw answer to that, Stu. It's, I'm not used to competing against my friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that is, it's one of those things, you know what, you, you got to make money, you, you, you got to win deals, but uh, both me and you have made a lot of friends, and John, we've made a lot of friends in this community, and you uh, run into situ situations where you're pitting your technology against someone you just had dinner with the last night or week before the last conference, and you, you've known for years, and they're actually your friend, and uh, keeping that you know, competitive nature, but at the same time, you know, maintaining your friendships. That's been surprisingly interesting. All right, well Keith, hey, pleasure to catch up with you. As always, you're always welcome on our program in one of these seats, and uh, yeah, absolutely. I, what I love about this community is I see lots of people that are friends that are fierce competitors, but they're grabbing out, hanging out at parties, you know, taking selfies together, uh, doing stuff like that. So uh, community, definitely a key theme. So Keith, thank you for being our community guest uh, for today. Day one of three days live wall-to-wall -wall coverage here in Las Vegas, VMworld 2018 for John Troyer. The CTO advisor, Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you for watching theCUBE.